everybody and welcome to another Die With Rain video. Today we are working with a new base and I'm very excited. This is 75% fine merino wool and 25% nylon and it is super wash. I'm so excited to try some super wash. Super wash wool does not felt at all during the dyeing process, wearing, spinning, any of that. It will not felt. So we're gonna try some experiments and see what happens. Now it definitely has a different texture when wet than the regular wool I'm used to dealing with. It's a lot softer and silkier. So let's see what happens. So I'm gonna add one teaspoon. That should be plenty for just the one braid. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the top, just like so. So I just pressed that around to mix it and let it soak for 20 minutes. And then I wrung it out and I laid it back in my pan, just like you see here, and I'm adding 800 milliliters of water to this braid. And I pressed it around to evenly distribute the water. And then my first color I went with was Soft Tan by Dharma. I wanted to go for like those gorgeous braids that you see with the tans and the browns and the peachy pinks. I absolutely love those braids of fiber. So I was kind of trying to recreate something like that and at the same time experiment with some of this superwash to see how fast the colors stuck. And as you can see, pretty much the very second that I laid that dye on the fiber, it was stuck in place. It did not run. It did not bleed through very much at all. It literally just stuck right where I placed it which can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what you're going for. Since this was just an experiment, I can't give you the exact measurements I used on my dies, but I will give you the colors and a approximate measurement since I was just playing around with the colors and adding as I go. This next color was Fawn by Dharma and I used 10 milliliters of a 100% stock solution of that dye and then I mixed that with 50 milliliters of water. If you need any help on how to mix your dyes or calculate stock solutions, you can check in the eye right here and I will link my other dye mixing video up there in the top right corner. I always like to press my dye just to see how far it'll go, especially with something like this that is using just a small amount of water. It's not like an immersion dyeing, it's just a pretty much a wet dye. Now here's our next color. This is Peach Blush, also by Dharma, and the mix ratio was 15 milliliters of a 1% stock solution of Peach Blush, and that was mixed with a dilution of 50 milliliters of water. I've got some really fun things in store for Peach Blush in the future. It is one of my favorite colors, and I absolutely love it. I definitely recommend picking that one up if you don't have it. And now we're getting into some really fun stuff. Here we have Jacquard Pink. And I used 15 milliliters of pink from a 1% stock solution as always. And that was diluted with 250 milliliters of water. I wanted a very light pastel-y pink because the peach blush was a little bit darker than what I was going for. So I went ahead and really, really diluted that pink. I went ahead and added the heat here and I believe I had let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes and let that dye soak in and then I went ahead and added more dye while the heat's still on. You can see the water bubbling up there in the right corner. I do not recommend doing this if you are using a non-superwash base but as with superwash I didn't have to worry about it so I could flip it around and move it while it was hot, add more dye and the temperature did not matter and the movement did not matter because it's not going to felt. I ended up adding more soft tan. I think I added around 30 milliliters, diluted some. This is where I stopped taking the measurements because I just wanted to get it the way I wanted it to look. So I stopped taking measurements and just started adding more dye as I saw fit. It's so funny because I feel like a lot of my colorways end up like this. I've only had like two or three true colorways that go by the notes 100%. It always starts with taking really detailed measurements and then I just kind of get a, all over the place getting it the way I want it to look. 
But the crazy thing is, I can usually recreate it the next time around just with those notes that I took from the first video or the first notebook page. Normally, if I was pressing down like this, it would be pretty getting pretty felted by now. So, the superwash aspect is definitely working. I'm going to add a little bit of acid. So I went ahead and added a little bit more citric acid, just a little tiny sprinkle on top. I probably didn't need any more, but I wanted to make sure that the colors were stuck and did not bleed at all. And I have to rotate my pan around since I have a big burner in the front and a small burner in the back. That way the heat kind of gets more evenly distributed that way. Now remember, this is superwash wool and all the moving around and pressing that I'm doing, you don't want to do that with regular non-superwash because it will felt. So normally with non-superwash wool, when you get to this point, you pretty much have to not touch it. While it is hot, you don't want to touch it. This is superwash and it's supposed to be uh, non-felting so i'm actually going to go ahead and take it and put it in a different spot so i can do some more dyeing. so i'm going to throw it in my little aluminum pan and let it cool and hopefully it won't felt but it, it's it's super washed they said it's super washed so we're going to give it a shot it's really hot but normally if this if this was non-super wash you don't want to touch it you have to let it sit so I went ahead and transferred that over to my aluminum pan so it could cool. Normally, as I said, you would want to just leave it to cool in the pan and not touch it. That's a big one on felting for non-superwash. I did cover it with a dish towel just to slow down the process a little bit more and to keep the heat in as it cooled down. So here we are the next morning. It is nice and cooled off. I'm using my favorite clear dish soap. It's ivory. I love the smell and it works great as a clear dish soap, doesn't add any color to the water so you can clearly see any bleeding you may have. I didn't expect any bleeding with this one and we didn't get any bleeding. And this one was really fun. This was a really fun dye for me. I didn't have to worry about it felting at all and that was honestly a huge weight off of my shoulders. I have quite a few more braids of this to dye in the future. And I've already did one other one. I've got a few comparison videos I want to film. I've been working on filming a lot lately. Just need to get caught up on my editing. But this was really fun and I'm so excited on how it turned out. And one thing about this superwash, it fluffed up so much while it was drying. It was amazing. I just want to say thank you guys so much for 700 subscribers. I'm blown away and so forever grateful. And I know the upload schedule has been a little hectic lately, so thank you so much for sticking with me through that. I've still managed to get one video a week out. It just hasn't been on a select day. So here is the finished braid. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love the colors. I'm going to be dyeing a few more up like this. This one you should be able to find in my Etsy shop today. You can check the link in the description box if you would like to get your hands on this exact braid. It will be listed today. And I will see y'all next week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.